Greetings, YouTube Nation. This is Ian from Mastic Shortline, and I have something that jumped the line somewhat in my uh, list of um, locomotives that I was going to perform some servicing on. This is a Lima FP45 locomotive in Via Rail livery. Of course, that the way that um, uh, the livery was painted was when Via Rail was beginning as an offshoot of Canadian National Rail Railways. Via was created from CN and a lot of their early locomotives had the had the logo over here and the CN logo over here. You also see it on some of their rolling stock. But I doubt that Via Rail actually had any FP45s so I would have to designate this as a fantasy scheme but what made this locomotive jump the line was that when I had um, received it over the weekend just before I had to head off to work um, the rear coupler in shipment broke off and when I mean it broke off the uh, brittle flimsy plastic I don't know if you can actually see it this little thing broke off in shipment and as a result the rear coupler came off the front coupler is in otherwise good condition right over here firmly in place maybe you can see it in this light maybe you can't I apologize and it was a it was a real disappointment because this particular item came all the way from Vancouver British Columbia and I had been tracking it and tracking it and tracking it waiting for this thing to make its cross province cross country adventure to um, Mastic New York now this was the bubble wrap that it came in it was securely packaged so there's no fault on the seller and I am in touch with the seller about this even the front and rear handrails were secure with these pieces of foam so again the seller did his due diligence so uh, after I do crack this girl open to um, service this locomotive my next venture would be to somehow mount a rear coupler on here now, um, before anyone were to shout at their, at their screens, why don't you just swap out the truck covers and you'll be set. Not so simple. And that is because the rear truck right above it is the motor that powers this locomotive. And there are screws here and here 
that hold not only the truck in place, hold the axles in place, it's also how you facilitate in removing the motor from the chassis, from the shell, in order to service the motor and the axles. There are no screws here or here. This is a free moving truck, which should which should should be. So I'm uh, I'm going to change cameras so that we could see a preliminary run test. So here we are at the test track. I got the Lima the Lima Via on the test track. Power pack is on. And now we're going to apply some power. And we got nothing. Wakey wakey, eggs and bakey. Wow. Okay. I do hear a humming. The seller did inform me that it was going to need some work and I think we have our work cut out for us okay so we're about to crack this girl open and I'm sure, based on the first few minutes of this presentation, you're probably saying, well, it's got this little mounting hole right over here. Wouldn't you be able to just slap it on, it, slap the shell onto an Athern FP45, and you'd be all set? Well, here is an Athern FP45. This was going to be the next in line for servicing until this girl just cut in. Now, here is the Athern FP45 over here. And I'm going to hold it like, hold these girls like so. And maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. Uh, you have to be here to actually see it. There are very key differences. The key difference is the length. Uh, I could tell you right now that the shell of the Athern is slightly longer than the Lima. There's also the front of the shells. This is the Athern, this is the Lima. They look the same, but they are not the same. Further to that, the mounting holes are here and here on either side of the fuel tank. 
of the Athern. I'm going to hold that up. Whereas the mounting hole for the le for the Lima is right above the rear truck. Go figure. This girl will be another project for another time. Perhaps it'll be the next project. Okay, so we have a handy dandy container to put the shell in and whatever else we deem necessary. And we have a little tray which you could pick up at Michael's, at Joanne's, uh, perhaps even Walmart. So we have these handy dandy things here. I also have the rear coupler and the little coupler thingy do that that came off. Many of you had suggested that I take JB Weld or Crazy Glue to try and put it back on, but a thing like a part like that that's as small as my pinky nail, I can't afford to take the chance that, you know, I might mismount the, um, the clip or that the strength of the con or that the weight of the consist that it'll pull post repair might just shear the thing off. So we'll figure we have a workaround. So we have two clips here and here and we have two clips here and here. We're going to take a slotted screwdriver and gently go underneath go go into the shell to dislodge it. That's one, that's the fireman sign. Gently, gently. And now the engineer's side, and it promptly lifts off. We're going to put, oh wow, snugly fits in there. So now we're inside, and we have the weight over here, which we will probably not even address because even if it is a little scruffy, a little rusty, it's not anything that, that it's in real plain sight that we have to worry about. Now, we have here in the rear compartment, in the rear truck, something known as a ring field motor. The ring field motor is basically a pancake motor on steroids. I'm not a big fan of pancake motors. Uh, in the early days of my model railroading, in the early days of my servicing model railroading, pancake motors and I didn't get along so well. Uh, in the sense that, <laughs> yeah, and it's not a laughing matter, I, I would, I, I lost the springs. The springs just flew off into oblivion. Guilty as charged. And even though I still have a few locomotives in my collection that, that are, Pancake motors, 
We all have to conquer our fears one day or another. It's easier to run than face your fears head on. And uh, so on the engineer side, and we know this is the engineer side because the headlight is right over here. And this is the motor over here. So on the engineer's side, we have the clips that hold the springs and the brushes in place. On the fireman's side, you have the gears. And the gears mesh with the trucks. Uh, or rather the front the front uh, axle of the rear truck and the rear axle of the rear truck um, since this is a daunting venture because I'm not a because I'm not a big fan of pancakes and I have watched um, other youtubers uh, service a ring field motor uh, I am still going to do the smart thing of taking a photograph. This way, I know how this thing is supposed to be put together. So, let us begin. Alright, taking our handy dandy slotted screwdriver, I'm going to remove this screw. that over here so the front truck cover is the I'm sorry the rear truck cover is off and Holy Roman Empire. Look at all that. Getting back to my exclamation and the ring fueled motor is coming out. Which was what we had wanted. Or are we going to go the other way? Shall we dance? Alright, we're going this way. Have a look at that. Can you see it? Maybe you can't. I'm going to change cameras so you can see this in nauseating detail. So, now that we're on the other camera, I could show you up close what you couldn't see on the other camera. It is a very hairy situation. Look at all that hair. Here, and here, here, and here. This will probably explain why the uh, wheel, why the, why the locomotive has such a difficult time 
moving back and forth because it's because it's just plain full-on disgusting I don't know what that is let's get rid of that uh, now the gears appear to be in fair shape they are turning I'm sorry. Uh, let me just change the camera a little bit more. The gears are turning. So that doesn't appear to be problematic. I still need to get inside to get to the commutator of this of this uh, motor to see how bad the windings are to see how bad the service is to get to get to that I need to undo these screws and underneath are the brushes and the springs so I'm going to do a bit of a two-pronged attack I am going to take care of the hairs first. Now, ordinarily with other locomotives, you just remove the uh, you just unclip them from the truck, but there doesn't appear to be any feasible way of unclipping them from the truck, unless if I were to dis disassemble the, uh, the axle itself, and I'm trying to avoid that inevitability although I may have no choice but to we'll see if I can no hold on one second So, I've gone ahead and removed all the hairs from these axles. I've also gone ahead and wiped down the wiper that these axles are connected to using a cotton swab and my old favorite go-to WD-40 Specialist Contact Cleaner. That you could find at any Walmart, uh, Home and Home Depot. I'm also just going to use the contact cleaner on the axle itself. So I'm kind of eager to try the motor. Now that I have removed all the hairs, so I am going to 
to test to see how well this motor is how well this motor runs So, the hairs did have something to do with it, but I still am going to have to get inside to take care of the commutator. Perhaps if I can get this thing to run, I can clean these axles. Alright, when we put this thing back together, I'm going to clean the each wheel rather than do it now. And uh, I am aware that this particular locomotive comes has to use uh, traction tires. And it will appear that the traction tires are... Um, unique looking they almost look brass like but they are intact which is a bonus for us because that means we won't have to replace the traction tires so let's get inside this motor this is so I'm going to use my magnifiers. So I'm going to get, I'm going to undo these screws over here. I'm also going to keep my cardiologist on speed dial because this is going to be a very interesting venture. I'm also going to take a picture so that I know what I'm doing. there Let's screw over there all right we're gonna open this thing up and we have to do it very carefully because with pancake motors springs tend to have their own launch trajectory And we're in. So there are the springs right there. Here are the brushes. Now, the brushes 
for these Limas are rather unique and different from an Athern locomotive, uh, which I've, which I like to service more so than I do with pancake motors. Um, what's different about these brushes, if you could see it, is that it looks like um, it's not a straight cylinder. It's like two little cylinders run on top of one another. The smaller uh, top goes right on top of the spring, which is behaving itself right over there. And I apologize if I'm raising my voice because I'm pretty nervous about this because I, um, because I don't have that good enough experience of dealing with um, pancake motors. But I'm going to take my bright boy polish that puppy down. I'm going to put that one right over there. We are going to take the other brush and take the bright boy to the commutator end so that it is in better shape than it was. And you are being all flopsy mopsy, aren't you? I'm actually going to move the brushes over here because that is the commutator, those are the commutator screws. The springs stay put. Here is the commutator itself and it looks like it's in rough shape. And we need to clean that. And we are going to take the contact cleaner. Going to take Q-tips. Now, the Q-tips, the, the cotton swabs that I use, I picked up at Walmart. They are the um, Equate pointed tip cotton swabs. They are different from the records. I find that uh, with the pointed tip, I can get into um, tighter spots easier than, than with a um, regular cotton swab. Um, and I got, I got that at Walmart. So I'm just going to clean it down, wipe it down. And I am picking up a lot of dirt.
it looks a little better so I'm just going to take fiberglass pencil take the edge off while these springs hold on for dear life and I want them to hold on to dear life okay so I'm going to show you very carefully that commutator is cleaner than how I found it. I'm going to take the off chance that I can probably get it to turn. And I'm going to see if I can get you guys to see it. Good. Almost forgot. We almost forgot. What did we forget? What did we almost forget? The oxidation in between the plates. Here we are. All right. I'm ready to reassemble. This is where we cross fingers and hope for the best. So, before we put Edwina back in bowl, uh, I had, there's no way for me to remove this axle in, or, in order for me to make it easy to just put everything back together. What I had seen on another uh, YouTuber's uh, video was to put, was to reassemble the ring field motor by just putting this right on top of that um, you'll notice that this that the brushes uh, try and carefully move everything you notice that the brushes are sitting right on top of the springs themselves that's because this the um, brushes themselves are being are um, the, uh, that smaller tip of the brush that didn't, that end of the brush that didn't sit on top of the commutator was being held in place by the spring itself. So that's what I'm doing. And if I'm not a complete moron, in theory, Everything should just go right into place and not and not disappoint me by what it just did. 
And you have to be extra careful because these things can and can and could fly off into oblivion if I am not careful. So now we ask ourselves the age-old question, is it in? Sorry kids. All right. Just going to take a deep breath. Let's see if our work paid off. Let's see if I didn't botch this up. Because if I have to, I'll take off this middle axle, remount it, and then we could continue. All right, so this means something came off. Be right back. <laughs> I kind of play and beat it. I played it uh, Atherton style and uh, lifelike Bachman style. I carefully 
lifted these two um, spring covers up, popped the spring, popped the brush in, uh, big end down, right on top of the commutator, put the spring right on top, the spring did cooperate, um, and holding the spring in place with the tweezers, pop the spring back in, press down hard, screwed each side in, and I still have to do a little lubrication, but we are running. We are cooking with gas. I have to get Here we are. Just need to add some lubrication, which will be done by applying some lubrication over here, and we're going to put a little label 107 right over here we are going to use my tried and true friend the red lithium and I'm sure you've seen my other videos about my feelings about red lithium now you don't have to go, you, you don't have to run out and buy this stuff. You're not obligated to buy this stuff. I'm not telling you to buy this stuff. You can use Super Lube. Or you could use Labelle or Woodland Scenics Lubricants. If that's how you roll, that's how you roll. But, this thing has helped me out in the past with past with other repairs so that's how but you know this is how I roll and um, given that we are not dealing with an Athern locomotive we have to be strategic where we put this stuff and how much stuff that we put on a little dab will do you And I am putting it, I am putting some red lithium over on these gears because it meshes with the gear that's right over here. Like so. I'm going to put a little red lithium here. And over here, because it's going to mesh with the axles. Like so. Now, we're going to
apply the electrodes again. There we go. So, our next area of attack is the front truck. Like I said, we're going to deal with the rear truck in a little while. I want to take care of the front truck first. The front truck of the um, of this Lima FP45 is held in place with this clip right over here. If we were to summarily remove, just move the clip ever so slightly, and of course it's not cooperating. Let's not force it. All right. Well, we got it loose, and I didn't break any weld, any wire, any solders. That's a first. So, but we did undo the front stanchions. We'll, we'll address that in a little bit. Now, by undoing this pin, and then there are two snaps in place that are holding this truck in, the truck cover in, so we just carefully push in the snaps. so that we don't harm the plastic. That's one. And that's two. The pin is right over there. Grab the pin, put you right over there. And this is very interesting. There is a specific wheel orientation to this truck. Unlike Athens, where it doesn't matter where you put the, um, the axle's back, it matters here. Um, there's, um, these axles are insulated on the engineer's side. 
You have nothing over here, but you have insulation right over here. This is the front of the locomotive. Over here. So, with that being said, I'm going to take a photo. And I urge everyone take photos as you go along. If you're not sure where you're going, if you're not, sh if you're heading into uncharted territory, take photographs because it matters. It matters when you put stuff back. When you put that thing where it came, put that thing back where it came from, it matters. And holy cow. We got us another hairy situation. Who doggies? This is the center axle. Harry, Harry, Harry. Hello, my name is Harry. Now, I don't think it matters as to the order that you put these axles back in but what matters is if I'm looking straight down at the truck cover itself it matters where I'm putting these the, the orientation where I'm putting these axles back so the way that I am looking at these axles is the way that these axles need to be put back in. Um, there is a wiper that I see. So I am going to take the, um, let's go with the fiberglass pencil this time around. And we go like so. Now, um, I'm going to... Now, before we remount this truck, we have to put that pin back in. And that pin, uh, that pin head sits right on top of the center axle. So, I'm going to go ahead and clean these off camera, and I'll be right back. So, with the axles cleaned and remounted, we insert it into the proper place. The pin is also back in where it should be. We could snap this thing closed. And someone's not playing along. All right, there we go. Took a little cajoling, but we're all set here. We can uh, let's take care of the front stanchion.
the fine folks at Lima did, should have, here we are, I heard that snap go in, um, before we put the um, front truck back in, I'm just going to give this just a little cleaning. Front and back. That's a little better. So I'm going to put that back in, like so, and snap this thing back in. got the rear truck remounted into the locomotive itself so now comes the fun part um, taking care of that rear coupler all right so here is my fix um, this is the original coupler. It almost looks like the sort of coupler that you would see on a on either a, a, a model power passenger car or a um, lifelike or a Tyco. And what I got ahead and done was I took a a different horn hook coupler. Don't hate me if I still use horn hook couplers. I grew up with them. I like them. I use them interchangeably with KD couplers. But getting back, I took I went through my uh, my junk drawer. And I f was trying a different horn hook coupler, and it took, it held on to it, because the little, uh, and I'm going to take another, I'm going to take a different horn hook coupler, because the part of this horn, this horn hook coupler, You would have to insert it in here, but it held that little part of it, if you could see, held on to it. So I took a quarter inch piece of styrene, quarter inch by quarter inch, applied a little lock Loctite to... Uh, top of the coupler housing and held it in place with a small screw. 
So I don't think this coupler is going to go anywhere. But we have yet to remount this truck housing. And we'll see if our work paid off. Be right back. Right, I got the I got the truck screwed back on. Now we're going to see if this thing actually works. Well, <laughs> she is a bit of a screecher, but she is running better than it was, if not slightly better than it was before we, before we cracked her open and serviced her. So I'm going to take this to the layout. Maybe she just needs to stretch her legs. Hold on. Well, here we are, nicely pulling a consist of three cars. It would have been four, except one of the cars kept, kept derailing. But I have to change the wheel sets on that. But... We could see that we're pulling at 45% throttle. The current draw is just magnificent, as is the voltage that it's putting out. I'm very, I am very pleased. with and freely admitting that the coupler operation appears to be successful 
and the servicing of the locomotive also uh, I survived it I didn't have to call my cardiologist I didn't have a cardiac event while servicing a, uh, a pancake motor I want to thank all of my subscribers for their support if you're not a subscriber please click on the subscribe link which is at the bottom right hand corner of this presentation please feel free to like share and subscribe and thank you all for stopping by see you soon